March 14th, 2077. Five years since a mandatory memory wipe, and I'm still haunted by these dreams. Victoria and I were assigned together. In two weeks, our mission here will be finished and we'll join the others. But the questions I ask, she doesn't. The things I wonder about, she won't. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. This is Cheap Seat Reviews. It's about the friendships that they made along the way. Tet Vision sucks. Just the tip. Hello, and thank you for listening to Cheap Seat Reviews, the podcast that explores the Hollywood film industry for the greater good. The greater good. (laughs) Nice. Nice. Thanks, Sally. (laughs) This is kind of a deep voice, Sally, but. Oh, well, you you sounded pretty close to her. That's that's actually pretty good. I mean, you know, when you actually do have a southern accent, then it helps, unlike, you know, fake southern accents. Do I I have a southern accent? Of course you do. (laughs) We we both do. We live in the South, so it's okay. I mean, oh, we don't have okay. like Matthew McConaughey Southern accents, but you know, we have Southern accents. Uh, I would, I okay. think our our guests who live in California would probably say that we do. We'll we'll find out what they uh, we have, they have to say in just a second. Uh, no Sam tonight. Sam is sick with the crud. Um, he sent a message about an hour ago saying, "Can't make it. Sorry, guys." Uh, hopefully I'll talk to you tomorrow. So we'll, we'll wish for him. By the time you hear this episode, we will know if Sam survived the night. Uh, Does that mean that we're not an effective team? No. (laughs) Okay. Just checking. No. I wonder how Sam would kill me though. I guess we'll have to, we'll have to ask him later. Uh, uh, this is episode 394 and tonight we're talking about Oblivion, the 2013 Tom Cruise vehicle oblivion um and by vehicle i mean like weird uh little uh bulbous sort of helicopter flying thing you know that's what i mean uh i am sean allred and joining us tonight is andrew why do all sci-fi drones slash robots have to make squealing noises when they die it's the same reason that that lightning has to charge up before it shoots out of the uh uh, proton pack. Yeah, that's that, the, at least the, that's the visual I got every time I saw lightning in this film. Okay, that sounds <laughs> that sounds reasonable, I guess. Uh, and making their uh, cheap seat reviews debut is Aaron. Now, this only hey. is, this is only this joke only works if you listen to Weird Al. But Aaron, I think I'm a clone now. Ah. Uh... Uh... And there's only two of me just a hanging around. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, he, he knows. That other voice is Kevin. I would be pissed too had they taken my pocket motorcycle. From Aaron and Kevin from the podcast that wouldn't die. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having us. Thank you. And I want to say that we have Southern California accent. Yeah. So with the oh, southern okay. theme, there you go. Oh, okay. Is that <laughs> is that is that a real thing? Like, like seriously, is that a real thing? No, he's shaking his head. No, okay. He doesn't know because he's only lived in Southern California. I've lived in the Bay Area. We we, it's all about like articles in front of the freeway. It's the 880, or it's 880. There's all kinds of different things between Northern <laughs> and Southern California. Okay. See, this is good. I didn't know that at all. We're all learning things today. I we guess. are all. It's, a, it's an educational podcast. It really is. We ought to, we ought to re- recategorize uh, education, and I'm pretty sure uh, we would top the charts because. Get that ORG. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, <laughs> if it wasn't too expensive, uh, there is a dot reviews out there, and uh, I've been toying with the idea of doing a cheap seat dot reviews. How cool would that be? Not too shabby. Yeah, that'd be pretty yeah. cool. It's just, you know, for some reason, it's just $25 a, a year seems like a lot for a for a website domain. I mean, it's only 25 bucks, but normally it's like three. So it just feels, I don't know. 
Like, that's uh, a bridge too far for re- respectability, I think. Uh, yeah, I don't know. for a joke, really. For, a, for the, <laughs> just so I can say, "Hey, look at me, we're a dot reviews." So, anyway, no one cares. But what they do care about <laughs> is uh, what we think about the 2013 movie Oblivion. So, when I threw up a few options for you guys to uh, to to watch, you jumped on this one pretty quickly. Was there any particular reason you guys? Uh, have a have a strong feeling one way or the, or the tother on this film? I, I'll take that answer. Uh, it's because Kevin didn't tell me there were any options, and he just said, <laughs> "Hey, we're we're going on this podcast, and we're doing Oblivion." How about that answer? <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I tend to think of myself as kind of a, a Tom Cruise file, if you will. Not in this case, though. This was a this was one that slipped right under the radar for me. So. I was like, you know what? Let's explore new territory, much like Tom Cruise does in this movie, right? Yeah. yeah. But we don't get the mind wipe, sadly. <laughs> sadly. Oh, no. Uh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I will admit, I'm going to spoil a little bit of your opinion when I said, hey, you know, I think last week I said, hey, we're, st- we're still on board for this movie, right? And you said, we better be. I just sat through this movie. And I thought, <laughs> 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 like, uh-oh. Uh oh. Spoiler. Yeah, we'll we're, we'll get to our opinions and thoughts in just a moment. But Andrew, please tell people what is Oblivion, because, like he said, this kind of slipped under the radar. There are probably people that don't know what this movie is about. Uh, yeah, I didn't. I'm still <laughs> but not now sure I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Oblivion, a veteran assigned to extract Earth's remaining resources, begins to question what he knows about his mission and himself. Deep. Okay. There you go. Yeah, it's pretty vague and not really helpful. Yeah, but. I didn't really. I, I don't understand why they call him a veteran, though. Because when I when I read that before, I read it before I watched the movie, and I thought, okay, is this guy from coming from the VFW? And you know what's what's happening here? But really, I think it should say astronaut, right? Yeah, because that's his that's his job. Well, Which I, think I know. That would be a I know. Spoiler, that. right? If they told us an astronaut, then that kind of spills the beans. I, I mean, I don't know yeah, I why so. he's described as a veteran either. That's that's a ridiculous. Well, yeah, because yeah. veteran would suggest military background, right. which you know, in the first three minutes of the movie, you think, oh, he obviously does some have some kind of military, and most astronauts do. Right. But yeah. Still, they it's a weird line. Come from the Air Force. Yeah. It's still a dumb yeah. line, and here we are once again making fun of IMDb and their bad synopses. So, who had seen this movie before this viewing? I, got... uh, I said the fly. Nope. No. Really? So I'm the only one that I've seen this movie about five the... times. Oh, yeah. oh, five dear. times? Easily. You said, you said that out loud. Easily. I saw this in the theater. <laughs> oh, Whoa. Really? I yeah. wasn't sure it went to the theater. All oh, right. <laughs> don't say stuff like that. <laughs> Tom Cruise is not at the point where he's going straight to video. He's not, he's not at the Bruce Le- Willis, Liam Neeson level right now. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay, this will be really interesting because um, I threw this on the list. Uh, it's actually been on our list to review for about a year and a half. Uh, and just, you know, finally someone crazy enough to accept the, <laughs> accept the challenge of this movie. Yeah. Um, so this will be interesting because I'll go ahead and say it up front, and we'll do five-word reviews here in just a second, but I really love this movie. So I feel like I'm going to have to defend it a little bit, and that's okay. I feel like you will too. That's okay. Yeah. I- I'm speechless. <laughs> you might be alone on this one. That's fine. <laughs> I think we're alone now. <laughs> I was alone last week. Last week when we did Watership Down, I was the only one that kind of enjoyed that film. So That's true. Yeah. You guys have you guys seen Watership Down? I have not. Like it was 10, a thousand right? years ago. Yeah. Like I can't <laughs> even remember. Rabbits. Yeah. Yeah, that's rabbits. all I remember. I Everyone don't remember told it. me it's like the most depressing thing they'd ever seen, and I'm watching it, going, "Okay, yeah, there's some death, but like it's not the worst thing I've ever seen," you know. And then this week came around. Well, no, this week <laughs> this was an uplifting experience for me. This was great. Okay, Andrew, what is your five word review? Because I, <laughs> I'm I'm going to start working on my defense here. Uh-huh. Yeah, I really only have one this week really and usually I, I yeah usually i have a couple but uh, here it is it's a pretty film but there's a lot of issues <laughs> okay. that's my that's my review I, I 
there are it, this is a gorgeous film. It really is. Like it's I feel like it's well done. You know, the the world building, uh, you know, no pun intended, is uh, it's done really well here. Um, these robots and and uh, AI technology and drones that have come into the world here, the the destruction of the planet, the destruction of the moon, like, you know, it just you feel like you're in a post-apocalyptic world as you watch this that has been taken over by another civilization or by another uh, species or something. You know, we, we don't really know what that is until we find out later on that it's basically AI or something, right? Or something. So, or something. Uh, and that leads me to some of the issues. I don't know who the bad guy was. To put it quite bluntly, um, it's the Borg it, Queen. What do you mean? It, it, is it? Yeah, is it the Borg that just? Came, where did this thing come from? Are there more? Are they sending another? You know, are there are there more of the the Victoria chick on the planet? That's going to get pissed because Jack number 52 ran off with somebody else. And now she doesn't know what to do. Is this where the sequel is going to, you know, there's just so many questions that I have that are unanswered. Can I, let me, let me that, ask you these questions then. Did you ask these same questions on independence day? Were you asking, Oh, are there other motherships or did you not care because that movie was exciting and there was lots of explosions and it came out in the I 90s. Don't, I don't think I cared, but I I kind of was okay with that idea because it was a it was an alien race. Sure. And I thought right. No, it's the same. You know, I, I wrote thought, that down. I want if it's an alien movie, how about give me some aliens? Yeah, yeah. Um, also the scavengers, the scavs, right? Mm-hmm. Which is a dumb name, but these guys, when you see them on film, these are. Everyday Joes like you and me, and you see them on the on the uh, uh, recordings or the the live whatever it is that they're watching, and they're running like cheetahs, <laughs> like they have these superhuman abilities to run in some weird fashion while they're struggling to breathe in their Darth Vader helmets. <laughs> I, I just there's some issues. <laughs> there's some issues with there's, this. There are definitely some issues. Uh, okay. Here's another big another big question that I have. Why does this AI need water? Why are they taking all the water? It's, do they it's don't, just, it's a battery. It's a battery. Yeah, it's you have to the, charge the Borg Queen ship. Yeah. Water charges the ship? It's it's a fission or a fusion yeah. reactor kind of the thing. Because the cooling. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Now that makes are more sense. Are we nuclear what I physicists? Does it make sense to us? I play one on TV. I mean, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense to us. We just know that they're taking our resources, and that's all that we need to know. I mean, I'm clear on the water concept. Now, the rest of the story, not so clear. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's kind of where I'm going to leave it right there because there's more I could talk about, but I'm gonna I'm gonna let some others give their thoughts on this this uh, this clearly classic film <laughs> that will go down in the ages. <laughs> you guys are being mean. <laughs> it will go down the toilet. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys are just being mean. Um. All right, uh, uh, Kevin. Well, let me say this. I, I remember when this movie came out to the theaters. It was about the same time as After Earth, if you guys remember that that Will Smith vehicle. They were both mm-hmm. like kind of competing for, oh, it's, you know, after the apocalypse, but Earth is kind of jacked, right? It's yeah. like we think, you know, we're on to bigger and better things, allegedly, but we're still back on crazy Earth for some reason. Um I missed both these movies. And I, I kind of, in my mind, this movie kind of was the beginning of the end of Tom Cruise. No, if, I mean, I, some people enjoy this movie. It basically was like, <laughs> it, was, it was like a stake in his heart for a few years there. You know what I mean? Um, and the, the trailers kind of spoiled everything because Morgan Freeman is all over the trailers, right? Yeah. So, which I guess you got to do. He's Morgan Freeman. What are you supposed to do? Have it be a big surprise at like the clo- mid credit scene? There, there's Morgan Freeman. Kevin, because basically after they finished it, they saw that it was going to be a snooze fest. So they needed to throw as many people at the first week out there to right. get some of that money back. Because they spent at least enough money that they could have uh, cured world hunger. 
it is it is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. I was telling Aaron, if you just turn down the volume and it's like a relaxing Saturday and just look at the visuals like it's a painting or something, there's there's like a, a therapeutic quality that might be present in that uh, activity. Like those videos flying over Scotland and stuff. It's Absolutely. flying over yeah. what used to be Earth. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, but I kept thinking, you know... The plot makes absolutely zero sense. Absolutely zero sense. I appreciate that the scavengers call themselves scavengers, and Sally in the tent also calls them scav. Like they agreed. By the way, call us scavengers from now on. Um, <laughs> that's important. But again, I, it's like if there are aliens, give me some aliens. Now I didn't like Independence Day either, frankly. Oh, but you at have least no there soul. Some, there were some aliens. <laughs> There are some slimy things with tentacles roaming around. Cool. I got that. Instead, it's like, what? It, uh, let me let me just say one more thing, and then I'll I'll pass the baton here. Um, in the grand reveal, we, we do do spoilers. Is that correct? I don't oh, wanna... yeah. Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's a nearly nine-year-old movie. We're fine. Yeah. Okay. In the grand reveal that the, the alien intelligence cloned thousands of Tom Cruise's to and use the Tom Cruises to wage war on Earth, basically, right? Uh, why you have you have drones? You have an unlimited supply of drones that are going to be far more effective than. I mean, Tom Cruise is in great shape, but the idea that you're going to unload, maybe that's the ultimate punishment. Here comes Tom Cruise. Get ready, Earth. <laughs> And what? I yield the floor. Okay. And I yield the floor. Point of order. Point of order. <laughs> okay, Aaron, what All you right, got? So this is a snooze fest. <laughs> Followed up with I like Iceland a lot. <laughs> so Iceland is the best part. And uh, you know, their groovy Hollywood Hills apartment floated in space above Iceland. That's awesome. But God, it's so we used to we we used to use the euphemism. It's very European, which means it's really <laughs> slow and long. But the, my <laughs> biggest problem is it just didn't make any sense. Like, why would they do a Tom Cruise who they know has leaking memories over and over and over and over again it this keeps they must be aware of what's going on up in the borg ship so why why because now they can clone anyone there was a bunch of people on that ship they must have cloned them too because when you go inside the ship it's like the matrix they got a, a thousand floaty bodies going around that was the other thing about this movie it's like they they took all these successful movies and like snatch little glimpses of them so the inside the borg ship is the matrix it's like it, it just steals all these kind of ideas but the the mortal sin is it's just kind of slow and it really doesn't make a lot of sense that's what i got to say friends okay. and then why is jamie lannister there yeah. <laughs> and he's Why not? wearing like a Game of Thrones outfit. He is. is that leftover from when they were filming on Iceland? <laughs> <laughs> they just and, didn't I mean, bring what you got. Well, I mean, I at feel the like time. His character was not really used that well either. Well, he's there just to be uh, a little bit of a foil. He's there to be a big, strong. I mean, the dude's like six foot three. So you put stand him next to Tom Cruise, baby, you know, five foot seven Tom Cruise. It's, <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um,. <laughs> He's just there to be the muscle, right? You know, Morgan Freeman's the brain. He's the muscle. You, you just need a big, strong dude to do that. And Game of Thrones was really popular in 2013, so why not? And why not? Yeah. But at, what bothered me, if this post-apocalyptic world where the water's clean, the air is clean... Uh, grass is growing, and he right. found this little area. I'm like, and people are leaving because why? It seems the Earth is going back. And then the radiation zone, that just reminded me of Planet of the Apes. That's what I mean. They just like, you're like, what? Huh? <laughs> what did they say? That it wasn't, that it clearly wasn't really radioactive, right? That was right. all just a trick so that Tom Cruise wouldn't stumble upon 
Tom, <laughs> Yet Tom another Cruise. Tom Cruise. Right. Right? So, this movie was radioactive. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Oh, my my, my five-word review was, did I fall asleep again? <laughs> okay. It is. If you're going to be bad, at least be 90 minutes. Don't be, what was this thing, two and a half, it six was, hours? It was two hours and three while. minutes. <laughs> two yeah. hours and six minutes. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's not, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying I to take, I wish I had been taking notes because I want to like, robot. I want to like address each individual thing that you guys have said. So no one is leaving the planet, first of all. Yes, the planet's regrowing, but there's no one leaving it because there's no one there to leave. Right, right, right. So the, the whole message that, we're going to go to the Tet and then go to Titan. That's all bullshit. Like, that's right. all, yeah. that's not a thing. So there's, so there's that. The reason why they cloned Tom Cruise, because that was the only dude that they had to clone. They had him. Well, why and, clone anybody? Well, the idea is that they need to have humans there on the, the place to manage the drones. And as far as having an army, if you're going to have an invasion army, then why not use someone that knows the terrain? Wait, wait a minute. Knows they the couldn't supply parts for the drone, yet they produced endless drones out of the mothership. And and if they need humans to repair these drones, who made them in the first place? Ooh. Who made the drones? Jesus. Who? who, who... <laughs> yeah, Robot Jesus. I don't know. You're robot asking Jesus. for a backstory that doesn't exist. So, I mean, like you either just have to accept that this is a species that exists. It's a it's an AI that is formed. You know, at some point in life, it built a ship around itself and and whatever. It, it goes from planet to planet, sucking up all the resources. Oh, wait. Why Sean, aren't drones wait, wait, wait. Re- repairing drones? I know what this is. Uh-oh. This is this is what happened. This is Disney. Um, cars yeah. Uh, yeah. became sentient when all the humans were whacked away. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then we move on to Wally and... And and then this is like the third chapter. Sure. Well, yeah. I, I wish Mater was in this one. This yeah. that well, that would have been good. <laughs> it would have made it better. I I do love the idea. I love I I have long since loved that idea that cars like humans have been w- wiped away and like the AI of cars just decided to like reboot society and they decided to live our same lives, which is why they make reference in Cars Three to not only racism but sexism, which like. Why would they have that in Cars world? But they do because of well, reasons. You know, Elon Musk purchased Twitter so that in the future the cars can tweet about how they used to be driven by people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay. Um, clearly, I'm not going to get anywhere uh, <laughs> trying to change any minds on this episode. Uh, I'll just simply give my five word reviews and uh, move on. So, my first one was. Uh, post-apocalyptic sci-fi mystery. I liked the mystery element. I liked that there was, you know, throughout the movie, we're still learning things as we go and then, and then learning things. And then you get the big reveal at the end, which I thought was, again, I thought it was very cool. Obviously I'm alone. Uh, and that, and (laughs) I kind of cheated. So technically, uh, this is, um, well, if you use the word top gun as one word, then I'm, I'm at five. Running motorcycles flying, Top Gun three. So okay, I, I made the joke right. This is basically Top is that Gun. A haiku? <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> <laughs> but like I make that joke right. So then I get onto uh, IMDb and look look up Oblivion, and then I look at the director Joseph Kaczynski, and I go, okay, well let's see what this guy's done. Well let's see, he has directed uh, Tron Legacy. See that. And then this movie, and then uh, a short a few years ago, or a few years later, and then something called Only the Brave, and now he's directing Top Gun Maverick. Oh, for reals? Yeah, so okay. he's directing the new Top Gun, and then he's also directing something called Spiderhead. You know it, See, don't you? This is all Scientology, I'm sure. <laughs> um, Spiderhead. In the near future, convicts are offered the chance to volunteer as medical subjects to shorten their sentence. One such subject for a new drug capable of generating feelings of love begins questioning the reality of his emotions. Isn't there already a movie about something like that? We volunteer to 
Wasn't, Clockwork Orange? No, not Clockwork Orange. Wasn't that part of um, Deadpool or something? Like, a little bit. I mean, there's a lot of those kind of movies where you volunteer yeah. for a thing. It's got Chris Hemsworth in it. And uh, the kid from the the drummer movie where he gets slapped in the face by... Oh, uh, Whiplash? Whiplash, yeah. Thank you. Miles Teller? Yeah. He's, he's in Top Gun too. Oh, well, of course he is. As well. Uh, and a bunch of other people I don't recognize. So, But you're saying, like, in the... 12 years since Oblivion came out. He did like he a did short. A short? <laughs> he did something <laughs> called The Dig, which was a short. And then he did, in 2017, he did something called Only the Brave, uh, based on the true story of the Granite Mountain Hotshots, a group of elite firefighters who risk everything to protect a town from historic wildfire. I actually remember this. That seems vaguely familiar to me. Yeah, it's got Josh Brolin, Miles Teller, Jeff Bridges, Jennifer Miles Conley. Miles Teller? Everywhere. James Badge Dale, Taylor Kitsch, Andy McDowell. Jeez. It sounds like Tom Cruise reached out to this dude because he felt bad about what happened after Oblivion. He should reach out to me then. He probably (laughs) liked his experience on Oblivion. I mean, that's what I mean. Yeah, he probably said, hey, let's do a let's do a top gun. Because you basically shot me, you know, I was already a fighter pilot in in Oblivion and I was on a motorcycle and I did a lot of running, so let's just do it again. He but said, that's okay. weird. One movie and a short in 12 years? Yikes. <laughs> well, can we talk you, about you, how Tom Cruise found a motorcycle to ride around on in the post-apocalyptic future? <laughs> he, he didn't that's, find yeah. it. It was part of the kit. It was part of Why his... Why is no. that necessary? I, I do have a question about this motorcycle. Um, so the l- little pocket cycle yes. that he has. Um, did anybody else as a kid or, or, or as a younger person remember... Those motorcycles, the, the bicycles that had the body of a motorcycle. Like, yeah, yeah. I, there, there's a little plastic. Uh, so you were riding a bicycle, but it looked like you a motorcycle. Still That's what I saw. Yeah, you were yeah, pedaling yeah, yeah. it, but it looked like a dirt bike. That's what this reminded me of, and I really, I almost laughed out loud when I saw it because I thought, please God, tell me that thing has pedals because I want to <laughs> see him like have to charge it up. Like a pedals. moped, you gotta get yeah. kind of pedal a little, get it going. <laughs> I did think yes. it was a little weird. Um, my only issue with the motorcycle was that it was running on fuel instead of a battery. I would have just yeah. assumed that it was a battery. So when it said low fuel, I thought, no, it's supposed to say battery. It should be a battery. There's no ex- that thing sounds like it's electric. Anyway, and it came from the Borg ship, but who made it? Well, if they, they if, if they need they, humans to repair it, they obviously I'm have some kind confused. of they obviously have some kind of manufacturing capabilities, right? Because they had that that cool house that was on that big stick, you know, in the middle, yeah. middle of whatever. That's what's so confusing because they also uh-huh. wouldn't send them any parts. So he was fixing everything with like gum, yeah, and <laughs> zip ties. Yeah, that it, was yeah. a weird subplot. MacGyver. That was a weird subplot that they wouldn't send materials for repairs but they sent him gum so that's good yeah he did have gun and f- gum and food y- you're not wrong in that it did seem weird it was like I-, I guess i mean so movies do annoy me when they do this and it's when the when characters act out of character only for the benefit of the audience right so i always use the hans example from frozen right when hans meets Anna for the first time and realizes she's the woman I'm going to hatch my nefarious plot but when we're when he's she walks away he gives this look of love like oh I'm in love with her no he would give an evil look because she's no right. longer there but he's doing that for the for the audience right so it's the same thing it's like the tet needs to act like they're a overextended bureaucracy and therefore can't act, you know, other uh, cuz they they could they could easily send 50 drones down there to help out, but they don't. I guess maybe because humans are used to bureaucracy. I don't know. Uh, the other thing that I will, the other complaint I do have is this this alien race, this, this species, has the ability to travel intergalactically, right? Or at least inter uh, solar systemly to get here. And they have the ability to clone, but they don't have the ability to create satellites because it, it was because it was a plot point that they kept losing communication with the tet like that was a thing that mattered and i thought yeah i couldn't 
understand why what 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 that was all about. That yeah, didn't just, make any sense to me. At least in the Independence Day, they saw yeah, they're using our satellites against us. So like yeah, there's 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 a little bit of a, a plot point there that I will I will concede. <laughs> And I mean, I want to say I did not hate this movie. It sounds like we're, you know, it was a total abomination. I just didn't think it was very good. You know, if that's a slight, sure, you know, a gradation. It, it's like not her. I mean, I've seen horrendous, and this is not horrendous. It's just kind of disappointing. You guys just watched Plan Nine from Outer Space. Like, I can't imagine why you would say anything bad about this movie ever. <laughs> that that moves, brother. That moves. <laughs> That is true. <laughs> well, and, and also, between the last two movies I've watched since this movie, bef- before this was Watership Down, so kind of a bummer, and then before that I watched um, Blade Runner 2049. This movie is an action-packed adventure compared to that film. <laughs> I mean, that movie is three and a half hours of good Lord, can we do something? I'm going to um, double down on that and say... That this movie, comp- uh, Wings of Desire, is like Baby Driver compared to this. And I always thought <laughs> no one gets that, that was reference. Like- Wings, I, yeah, I have no idea what Wings of Desire is. Is that a porn that you watched recently? Like, what is that? It's about uh, it airplane, <laughs> airplane sex. Nice. <laughs> No. Never mind. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, still, I, I'm generally confused. Is Baby Driver a thing you like or you dislike? <laughs> I'm saying that Wings of Desire, this movie that no none of you people have seen, people. Uh, is is European, which means slow. But compared to this, it's like Baby Driver. Okay. But if you have to explain it, it's not of funny. course, it's not so effective. Yeah. <laughs> Pick a different so, movie. Sorry. I guess so. <laughs> womp, womp. So I've got some other things. I've got some other things that bother me yeah. about the movie. Go ahead. Uh, this one was kind of a big one for me. The black box that they pick up when the Odyssey crashes uh, on on the ground there, when the survivors fall back to Earth. Why on the black box recording is there recording of the module after it separates and the black box is no longer with them? So there's a recording of Tom Cruise and and Redhead Mick well, Ginger, um, whatever her name is, Vicka, uh, Vicar, Vicka, Victoria, yeah, Victoria, yeah. But he called her Vicka. So, yeah, it's a good yeah. Name. I've never heard that before. No. So there's Jack and there's Vicka, and they're still talking, and you still hear the recording of them talking, but the black box is no longer with them apparently. The- to, to your point specifically, you're not wrong, and I thought about that too. I just forgot about it. But like, it m- would actually make more sense that we're hearing their conversation because the black box should be with the pilot in the the control exactly. mo- the control module. So yeah. the the fact that it crashed with the uh, the beds is a little weird. Yeah, you know, very weird. It, it it is a little weird. You're not wrong. I mean, it's a I know plot hole. it is a plot hole. They they needed Tom Cruise to have the chance to listen right. and and have the moment. Um, I, I don't know. I I can make up some bullshit thing and say they had two black boxes and they're synced together. You know, it's a how plot. does the yeah. black box works work? I'm not a pilot. I mean, does it just record any conversation that's near the the cockpit? It is records that anything that's on comm. Yeah. I mean that's how they do work in on airplanes. It's just anything that any kind of communication that's on comm that a microphone can pick up, it records along with flight data and all the other data. So Tom Cruise going back into the other room to make out like r- lick the the screen of his comatose <laughs> wife that'll all be recorded. I mean if it's on a, if you hear it, yeah, then yes, <laughs> yeah. The the only thing that's, that's that's more bullshit is the fact that there's a a play button on it. Like it would be a hard drive. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's even, not like it's a cassette recorder. It's not a cassette it's not recorder. A it's no. a boombox. Yeah, it's it wouldn't be that. It, he would have to plug it in again. I yeah okay. All well, right, I have I another was question. Confused. Oh, go ahead. I was confused. So during that part, so he and the redhead both know that's his wife in the back, but she's still taking these like we're a couple pictures. 
Right, the selfie. Yeah. The selfie together. What the hell was all that? She loved him. Yeah, it just, I think. I think she did, yeah. Yeah, I think they're just trying to she give a little. She loved him so much that she was, she zapped him right out of there. She called forth the robots that live under the condo. Oh, well, that, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. I, I think that the the original, the uh, the OG Vicka had a thing for Tom Cruise. And, I think that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, and so the Tet took that information, and so when they stuck them back on Earth, they made them the couple. But for whatever reason, her programming was stronger than Tom Cruise's. I don't know why. That's because she was more loyal to the Tet than Tom Cruise. That's why yeah. she, when she threw him under the bus, it got real bad. But but you're not wrong. There's, there's probably a bunch, like that other Vicka is probably still back at that little mountain cow, mountain house. Like, And she's pissed. She's yeah. real pissed. Believe you me. Yeah, she's now so, carrying a gun for three years looking for Tom Cruise 52. <laughs> Thousands since, of since, them. Since we're on this Vicka kick here. Oh, um, you want to talk about the thing pool that bo- scene? No. Well, maybe. That's but the uh, another thing that bothered me is he goes to see... Vicka 52 while wearing yeah yeah his jacket 49 jack 49 yeah she doesn't notice this problem yeah she would absolutely like she, notice that yeah yeah absolutely she would yeah that, that's Sorry. her job to, now, be, to notice things like she looks at him like if i walk in to my house with my wife and i have a small scratch on my face the first thing my wife is going to ask me is what happened at work today? Exactly. Bzzz, what's going on? Something's right. Different. She, <laughs> he walks in. His nose is bleeding. He's got a scratch on it, abrasions on yes. his face. His stubble is like three days older, and his jacket is filthy. And it <laughs> takes her about four minutes to go, hey, what happened? <laughs> like, we live in the sand. How did you get that dirty? Yeah, you're not, you're not wrong. Yeah. yeah, 52 version of Vicka sucks. I mean, I do. the whole Vicka thing was ridiculous. This is this is just a very man man movie. All she does is wear nine inch heels and and put her finger on the coffee table all day long. And then if if her husband or whatever asks any questions, it's time to just disrobe and jump in the pool. Confusion, I, shiny object. Don't <laughs> ask these questions. So what you're saying is is the Tet though voiced by a woman is actually just a dude. No, I'm just saying that th- this movie is kind of misogynistic. No, I, I'm saying that's what it is, because the, the Ted's like, hmm, we don't have a way to fix Tom Cruise, so we'll just put a shiny, naked girl in front of him. Okay. Because, like, yeah. she 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 changed clothes. It's AI. It's, it's not one or another, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just like that she changed clothes from her, her normal wear, which was that white kind of smock with the logo, into a full dress where she's wearing uh-huh. no underwear. Like... She, That'll she, do it. I mean, you know, in reality, she'd just be uh, wearing some old, dirty socks in a bathrobe because I mean, you know, yeah. whatever. I'm here. I've been here uh, with no one to talk to but crazy Tom Cruise I for mean, God ben, knows how long. They, they've ben been Halen T-shirt. They, <laughs> they've been doing um, they've been doing social distancing for five years. I mean, yeah. Oh, and so hold on, Andrew, real quick. This is just a dumb yeah. nitpick, but this is just a thing that bothered me. Like. In the future, all future movies have like video screens that are translucent and in front of us, which I think is the mm-hmm. worst invention of technology ever. I don't want to see shit past my screen, right? Yeah, how There's... am I gonna read this? There's like a tree blowing in the background. Yeah, exactly. Kids are walking by. But the only thing I can think that's worse than that is it being on your desk, where all day you have to lean forward and With down, your head bent down. Oh yeah. my gosh! At that least looks... angle it. <laughs> It looks Not so ergonomic. all day. There's she's no just, ergonomics in the future. All day she's yeah. leaning on that thing. I just like, oh my gosh, that was looks so painful. All right, go ahead, Andrew. I, well, all I was gonna say, speaking of the the love interests in this movie, plural, I am proud of this director, whoever made this choice, that we finally have Tom Cruise with an age appropriate, uh, with two age appropriate women usually we have these movies where it's tom cruise and then an 18 year old uh but these women um 
Are Andrea. they age appropriate? I'm yeah, about yeah. twenty so, years younger. Difference. No, no, they look like they honestly look like they're much younger. But Tom Cruise was born in 1976. Uh, Olga. Wait, Tom Cruise Wait, no, he was not born in 1976. No? He's 61. His IMDb page. He oh, was no, 49 six, six when he started this movie. Don't read Excuse that. His me. IMDb I'm page says he's six feet tall, no. I'm sure. No, it, yeah, no I'm he, sorry. He was, he was born in 1962. Seven, sorry, 76 is when he started acting. I'm sorry. I just saw the date 76, and I thought, my God, I didn't realize he was, I was that like, young. 62. I'm sorry. Changed his age again. <laughs> Scientology allows you to change your age. Well. <laughs> That's true. <They're> <laughs> so, but even still, these. The, okay, so <laughs> one of these is 20 years younger. <laughs> uh, 62 to but, 79. Yeah, yeah, and then 62 to 80. One or something. <laughs> so okay, so I retract my age. statement. There Once again, go. I am acting as Amber Heard's attorney this week, and I'm retracting <laughs> all of my statements. Let me ask you, did anyone think she was a robot, His his the redhead chick? I thought she was a robot for a little while, because she was just literally... No real... That honestly would have made more sense. I think if, if we had seen uh, when he goes up to the Tet that... It's full of, uh, you, you know, iRobot style, you know, androids. That that kind of would have made more sense, and one of them might look like her. I don't know. No, and I mean, the, even and, if he's a robot, make them both robots. I, <laughs> I, I considered that too. Then I thought it was going to be like a Groundhog Day where they get killed, and then it, it, the relationship <laughs> falls apart, and then it just starts over again, and then the exact same thing happens, and that's the oblivion. Well, that's that yeah. been better. that's Ed, Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, and that's basically that movie. That, I, I mean, no, and that's one that I like too. So you know. I love Edge Edge of Tomorrow. Okay, good. I, I think Edge of Tomorrow kind of saved him. Truly, Isn't that after, a soap opera from the seventies? That's in sure. of tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I literally wondered: Would this movie have been better if the the fake cover story was actually the real story? You know what I mean? If it was literally like he's down there battling crazy monsters on a post apocalyptic Earth, is that better than whatever the hell this is? <laughs> I don't know. It I might think be. So. I, I mean, it might be simpler. I don't know if it's better. Ooh, that's a shot. Yeah. Boom. I'm just I'm just saying, like, I think, I mean, you know, then then it just is Independence Day. It's just Independence Day after the aliens win and it's fifty years later. I I just I, I like the I to me it's clever. I like the idea that um that the the humans have uh, you know basically two of them have been enslaved. Uh, in the form of clones, and they're having to do the bidding of their this master who they think is, you know, people and humans and whatever, right. because it's the only information that they have. And I, I like the idea that you know Tom Cruise's memory is a little a little wonky, and that the power of this is going to sound super cheesy, but the power of love overcomes the memory wipe. I mean, that's literally what it Kevin. comes down to. So uh, I don't know. I like it. I I I I will die on this hill, and that's fine. That's okay, you know. And, we all we all like interesting and bizarre. Hey, things. I also like Waterworld, so I'm weird. Oh, but oof. you know, I I like I like post apocalyptic things. Like this is like this scratches all of the itches for me. Like weird tech, you know, robots doing dumb things, Tom Cruise running up hills. Like like this thing scratches all of the itches. <laughs> and we haven't mentioned it yet, but again, this is the this is the dude what did Tron. It's the same uh, composer, M28 or whatever it is, M82. Yeah. No, I, I really, I love the music. The score is really, really yeah, great. And again, great. I'll definitely fight both of you on that one. I loved it. You said turn the, turn the volume down and just watch the movie. It's pretty. It is pretty. If you want to turn off the dialogue and just listen to the music, I think that's a great way to experience this too. I love it. That would it. work. That would work. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I really do. Because this, this, this movie will pop up on my, uh, my list of... Uh, kind of film score uh, listening to every now and then. And I just, I love it. I think it's great. I think it's better than Tron, personally. I No, Tron was Daft Punk, I thought. So this isn't the same group. Anyway. Yeah. That's true, yeah. But it's the same style. It is I the mean, same it, you style. Get a, yeah. It's you like get, that. You get it's, a little she's feel Norwegian, so you got that kind of Icelandic, kind of moody. 
Whatever. It reminds me a little bit of um, just that kind of Vangelis from from Blade Runner. Just got kind Blade of Blade Run, and then the uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine had a good soundtrack too. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I just I just got done with that movie like five minutes ago, and I started it. Two it's weeks not ago. my favorite movie, but it has a it's, it's M- a moody soundtrack. M eighty three is what I should have said. I apologize. Uh, I was like M I six. Yeah, they've done they've done stuff. Uh, but mostly their own their own stuff. They've done uh well actually Oblivion is the only film he they've scored. Hmm. Yep. Well, they did a good job. So, you know, do do more things. Did they though? I think they okay. did. You said they I'm not did, opposed to the soundtrack. Yeah, I thought Oh, was, oh, I'm sorry, the score. I I was confused. I thought we'd moved on to something else and we were talking about a, a rating score of the movie. No, yes, no. no, the the musical score. Yeah. Okay, I'm I'm with you now. Oh, yeah. So well, so there's there's it, two dudes in this M whatever, M80 whatever. So the other guy <laughs> has done a bunch of stuff. Uh uh so he's he's actually composing that new spider head thing I mentioned. Uh, as well as let's see, he did The Witcher, which you know I like The Witcher. I may be the only one. Uh, I love The Witcher. Uh, let's see, he did uh, a let's Star see. Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge video game. Um, I'm just going through some stuff. He's got he's done some stuff, so so good for him. Uh, oh, he did the 2018 Robin Hood movie, which again I actually like, and I think I'm. Yeah. Not very is that Taron Egerton? Yeah. Not uh, Russell mm-hmm. Crowe. Not the Russell Crowe. Jamie Crow Fox one. and yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's fine. It's not great. I I love no. the Russell Crowe one, especially the director's cut. That's a good movie. Mm-hmm. But really basically, is. all of the um, uh, which Scott brother um, crap, I can't remember. Ridley. Yeah, all of his director's cut versions of his movies, like Kingdom of Heaven director's cut, is really really good. Uh, so. Anyway, his his cut of uh, Justice League is pretty good too. I don't know if you've seen it. But it's not the same guy. Uh, <laughs> Sam's not here. I had to. I had to is yeah, that yeah, the, the shorter the... version? Because that's the the one I <laughs> yeah. like. Not oh. the, the six hour bonanza. With speaking of Icelandic chanting, <laughs> if you like Icelandic chanting, tune into the Snyder cut. There's about thirty minutes of that. There's a lot. That's a long movie too. That's a really long movie. <laughs> uh, Can I ask a question? Of course. Why is this movie called Oblivion? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Is there an IMDb page I can look at? Wikipedia? A Reddit? Yeah, but it doesn't. Thread? It doesn't answer those questions. But damn, though. there is one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I can look sweet, it up, but oblivion. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jack's bike is a Honda CRF. <laughs> 450X, chosen for its minimalistic design and ability to handle stunts. Its designers hid the exhaust pipe and gave it a tank that held less than one liter of fuel, allowing for only 20 minutes of ride time. Yeah, I expected to see him, like, waving his fist in the air with, Highway to the danger zone. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, uh, I don't know. I guess I'll have to look that up uh, at some other point, but you're, you're, you're not wrong. Uh, I don't know what you would call it. The the uh, I think I'm a clone now. I think that's what it is. Spoiler alert! No, I know. No, it, you know what it was. It's kind of like like M Night Shyamalan, right? It's a lot of his early movies. It's like, oh, I'm really enjoying this movie, and then the twist. You're gonna, oh, the twist takes it to another level. Then there was that stage, which we like to call the rest of his career, where you're <laughs> like. Oh, I'm really enjoying this movie. Oh, the twist? Well, now it sucks. Now I hate this movie. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Damn you, M. Night. How Screw could you? Me again. So, so what? I'm always curious because uh, I I get some heat for this on Twitter sometimes. What is that moment? So, like, we all agree that the Sixth Synth is great, and I right. think it's universally accepted that Unbreakable is great. So, right. are you in the camp of is Signs great or is Signs the one where? Because, because for me, Signs was great until you get the reveal, and then I freaking hate it. That's, That's the what it is. That's the rest mm-hmm. of his career. Okay. The yeah. only problem is the farther his career goes, that moment gets closer to the beginning. Yeah. Till <laughs> you're at the happening, and twenty minutes in, you're like, "What the, the f- 
It's nature. Right. Ah! <laughs> now I'm gonna sit here and just be angry because I came with Did, people. Was the village before or after signs? After. That was after. after. Yeah, yeah. So I thought the village was okay. I thought until it was the twist. You figured it out. Until the twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The twist kills it. Then you're yeah. like, damn you. Yeah, the, well, it's, the it's twist. It's like we're saying with Oblivion. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, the twist for me and the village never bothered me. I didn't care. It didn't really. It didn't blow That's my the mind. Thing. I was like, I didn't care though. I was like, okay, whatever, that's fine. It, it, like, the only thing that it made was her adventure because she was blind, all that more perilous because the like they didn't tell her what was gonna happen. Like when I get mad at signs, it's because it's like, wait a minute, you're telling me that this inter this species is smart enough to travel again to our solar system <laughs> one without us knowing, two to come down to our planet without us knowing. And they did this on a planet that's ninety percent the thing that kills them. Like, what will they? What was their plan if it rained? Like, I don't <laughs> understand. This is a species that can open doors. How did you get interplanetary <laughs> they, travel? Oh, they I had those I disposable ponchos. <laughs> I, 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 once you find out that they are legit aliens, and that water kills them, I know people are like. But that's not what the purpose of the movie is. And people might be listening. They're yelling at their phones now. I know the movie's about faith. I know that that's what the movie is about. You know, they, it's a horror film wrapped about, about around faith. Faith in your family. Faith in actual God. Things like that. I know that. But you're still, it's a, still an alien movie. It's still an alien invasion movie. Just wait for it to rain. Like, are they ever going to go to, like, Seattle? I mean, Seattle, you're fine, right? Because it rained there every day. Anyway. Enough I have to say, to be desert dwellers. That's it. Yeah. I have to say, I hate it when people say it really wasn't about the thing that they claim to be about the entire time. You know what I mean? Like when you watch Lost, do you guys remember Lost? Where it was like, yeah. oh, it's about mysteries on top of mysteries. And at the end, they're like, oh, no, 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 not about the mysteries. It's about the friendships that they made along the way. It's like, what? I didn't tune in for five years about the friendships they made along the way. <laughs> Sons of bitches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, yeah, if you have to explain it to me, it ain't working. And the problem with M. Night, I wanted to be like Six Sense. I wanted to be the end of the movie when I figure it out, not five minutes in. The funny thing is, so I I watched when when that movie came out, um, and I rented it on you know VHS, and I watched my parents watch it. Well, I saw it in the theater, so I knew the twist. Right. So I'm watching with my parents, and my mom about halfway through the movie leans over and goes, "He's dead, isn't he?" And I said, "What? What do you mean?" She says, "He hasn't changed clothes one time. He's wearing the same outfit." I never noticed that. Your like, mom's a wizard. Well, she literally <laughs> is. She's a she has her doctorate. She's like the smartest person I've ever known. So I'm just like, no, mom, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. Just like outright <laughs> lying to mom, and then finally when they reveal, <laughs> she's like, I told you, I knew it. It's so funny. Uh, I've heard tales of people like that who figured it out, but I was not <laughs> one of the smarticles. Yeah, no, my yeah. <laughs> not me. It had me fooled. It had yeah. me fooled the whole time. Yeah. Dr. Mom. My, one of my favorite uh, mom stories about it at the theater is that, um, so I went to, on a date to go see the Titanic movie. And I came home and I told her about the movie. And so she is going to go with some of her girlfriends to go see the Titanic. So she's standing there in line and she's saying to her girlfriend there, like, hey, you know, this, the, the movie is actually really good. My, my 14-year-old son went to go see it on a date and he really liked it. And his favorite part was you know, seeing how epic it was when the boat sinks. And this couple behind them says, the boat sinks, spoiler alert, and walked away. Like, <laughs> it's the Titanic! Like, they had no idea what that meant, you know? So, all right. Uh, I, I saw La Bamba, and I didn't know Richie died at the end. So, what do <laughs> I know? Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, in case you didn't Again, know. from an event that happened 40 45 years ago, yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, I don't. I'm trying to think. Um, I don't really have any other notes. Anything else we want to talk about before I play some clips? All I can say is, isn't the robot that lives in the condo the same robot that in RoboCop blows up the conference room? 
I mean, they do kind of look like a flying Ed 209. Which is what my, my joke is at the beginning. is like when the Ed 209 gets turned upside down, it squeals like a pig. Like when these things get shot and they're... Whee! Yeah, and I, again, and when, when we reviewed that movie, I asked the question, what asshole programmer decided, you know, if this thing gets turned upside down, we should make it squeal like a pig. Yeah, that'll be funny. And they programmed it, right? They had to program that. So... That'll be funny. Yeah. That'll, that'll be funny. The next version, it'll beg for its life. That, yeah. That'll be even more hysterical. Could you imagine? <laughs> you think that technician got fired, the programmer that, you know, when he, because he, he killed that guy. I, I felt bad for that poor man. Okay. Uh, here's, uh, here's some clips. All right. Here's Tom Cruise uh, thinking he's going to escape. <laughs> there you go. Get a little, little ha. <laughs> now. <laughs> here's here's something interesting, and Andrew knows this about me. I have to watch these movies now with subtitles on. I do too. Because he's old. Because when I'm old, and two, um, I have always kind of had a, a bad uh, time with understanding. Um, and this is the thing: there, there's there, there's articles about this now, where like directors, like specifically like Christopher Nolan, like they don't care about dialogue. So right. if you can't hear it, that's not his fault. That's whatever. So in that shot there, and I never knew this, when he's being pulled up uh, on his bike, which, by the way, how does that bike hold his weight? Is it like, does the kickstand kick into the ground, like dig into the ground? Anyway. It's, a, it's a Honda CR plastic. It's going to hold him. I guess so. I mean, Tom Cruise probably does only weigh about five pounds. He's a little, he's a little guy. So right when he says, <laughs> the rope breaks. Now, I just assumed that it was friction from the rock. But in the subtitles, it says gunshot. That what? someone shot the rope to force him to fall. That it, that was an intentional thing. There were no damn gunshot. No. That's what I it says. I didn't hear gunshot. I didn't either. Because it's, it's, it's just the a, 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 a sound of the rope snapping. Yeah. But in the subtitles, it says gunshot. I mean, it makes sense, right? Because then someone steals his bike. Yeah, but like, wasn't that a steel cord? It wasn't just like some old rope that had been rolling around the trunk of his car. Oh no, this is alien tech rope. You know this is pretty good. <laughs> but like, I, I my point would be like, show me that, right? Have us show the outline of a scab there with a gun. You know, have you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't know that. Or just I, just show the gun. You don't you don't even have to show a, a person. Just show somebody well, yeah, putting you, a gun at the rope and pulling the trigger. Because we still think the scavs are like monsters or something at this point. Right. right. We don't know who they are. In fact, for half the movie, I thought they were saying scab. Scab, yeah. We yeah. cross picket lines. Yeah. I guess I need the, 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 the second audio program sure. rocket, too. Yeah. <laughs> I, I always have it going. Okay. Uh, this dialogue is kind of annoying to me do you have any memories before the mission before the security went our job is not to remember remember do you remember her i don't know why that just kind of annoys me you're gonna use the our word our job is not to remember that's all i heard was our job is yeah, not we, to remember. we didn't hear that clip it was just part oh. of it well, I don't know why. That's weird. I will turn your volume up. Maybe you'll hear oh, some shit. sweet, sexy. Get ready. No, no, you're not gonna. I'm not gonna kill you. Some sweet, sexy uh, Morgan Freeman dialogue. I've been watching you, Jack. You're curious. What are you looking for in those books? Do they bring back old memories? You won't get anything from me. My memory's been wiped to protest the security, security of the mission. Yes. You can't have your precious memory falling into the wrong hands now, can you? I like that. I, I One, I love that it's just Morgan Freeman talking, so I wanted to capture that. But two, it almost feels like Morgan Freeman is doing our job and kind of poking a hole in the plot a little bit. Uh-huh. You know, he's like, right. like, why would they do a security wipe? Like, what's the point of a security wipe? To wipe your memory, like why? Well, it's because they don't want you to remember before. Is, you know, that's like, right. They had to come up with some kind of rationale while they're wiping his memory because what? We don't want the scavs to figure out that you go out and repair the drums from time to time. Yeah. Well, and let's face it, it's a clone. So 
it wouldn't have the memories of the first person anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah, but you have to tell him why he doesn't have memories is the point. Like You have to give him a reason why he doesn't have the memories. Uh, like Blade Runner, they gave him a, a little backstory and rando pictures. Yep. Ooh, that's a, there's a spoiler for you. Uh, let's see. Here's... Um, <laughs> You know, not 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 as quite as no, I am your father, but you know, we're we're close. Who are you? I'm your wife. There you go. I'm your wife. Who are you? I like the way he delivers that line. There's and a... why didn't the board queen clone those people? Because she obviously knew they were floating around there. They didn't have they didn't have them. They were still in orbit. They didn't know where they were. That's what why when they crash, they hero or superpowers does she have if she can't figure out that they're floating around there for well, eighty years? For eighty years, just circling around. Right, but I mean, it's space, right? You know, what I mean, it's, like, it's it's a big planet. They're, they're fine, you know. It, you know, they they can't even communicate when the Ted's on the other side of the planet. You think they can find a spaceship that's the size of my bedroom right here? Like, how you come know. Jamie Lannister knew how to call him back? <laughs> It took well. They said it took them fifty years to decipher the codes. I mean, and it took uh, them a long time. Plus, he's yeah, Jamie that, Lannister. You know, he grew his hand back just so he, he could hold a gun. True. So he that, started uh, the project when he was like three. Is that it? Well, Morgan Freeman's been there for a hundred years, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that clip reminded me. That I don't really have, and I've never had a big issue with Tom Cruise's acting. You know, I think he's fine, but. I felt like there was a little bit of overacting in this movie. Just like one or two scenes, that was one of them. And then the other one was when he comes up and finds out that his bike's gone. And he like, <laughs> the, he's far away from the camera and he like throws his arms up. And Oh, they took you know, my they gosh darn right. bike! Yeah. 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 I, it just, I was like, okay, cool, it, cool your jets there, Tom. Yeah. That he's was always a real like on Tom the edge. Cruise reaction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's that always was a, said too much coffee and he's right on that edge. Don't mess yeah, with my but, bike. Yeah. That was an Oprah jumping on the couch moment, I think. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's exactly that's right. That's the real Tom Cruise. Uh, so this is kind of, again, back to hard dialogue to understand. The, so there's a lot of noise happening in this scene, but it, it still kind of made me laugh. I'm going to die! No! Maybe. So if you can't decipher what just happened, like their ship is crashing, she asks, are we going to die? He says, no. Then the engines cut out, and then he says, maybe. So it, it's that's kind of like the only humor in the entire film right there. And that's good. I like that. Yeah. That was a fun little moment. Yeah, it was. It was fun. Um, yeah. I, I Again, I. All right. Uh, here's Morgan Freeman saying some cool stuff, too. Oh, I would love to be there to see that thing's face when this goes off. I'd be a one way trip. Yeah. But it'd be worth it. I love it. And that music in the background is just great. I mean, it just gets me pumped up. This segment is brought to you by... Hey there, this is Frankie Sparks. And this is Scott Eisenberg. We're married. And we have a podcast called Shoot the Flick. Every week, Scott and I introduce each other to a new movie the other one has never seen. We talk about it, give our thoughts on it, and also share some behind-the-scenes fun facts. We want you guys to come along and enjoy the movies with us. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter at ShootTheFlick, and check out our weekly episodes every single Wednesday on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and pretty much anywhere else you can find a podcast. Come and listen to us now as Frankie and I Shoot, shoot the, the Flick! flick. All right, time for this. And now for some more bad news. Ready? It is time for Did You Notice? The game that Andrew made up a few weeks ago, and we are just <laughs> having a blast doing. So this week, uh, we're going to be a little different. There's no Sam. So obviously, uh, so what we're, we're going to do is we're going to have Aaron and Kevin versus me. So there you go. The way this game works is Andrew has created five or six questions based on things in the movie not trivia but based in the movie and we're going to we're going to determine if we noticed them so Aaron or uh, Andrew take it away 
Yeah, so uh, the, this will go to Aaron and Kevin first, right? And if they don't get it, then, Sean, you'll get a chance to steal. So here's question number one. As Victoria is sending information to Sally, she uses a touchscreen desk or coffee table, as has been mentioned, to complete her work. There is a program name brand located on the screen. Now, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you, this is not a real world brand. This is made up for the movie. So do you have an idea what that name brand was? Tet? What do you think, Aaron? I, I was going to say Epson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Epson. <laughs> but it's like, did it end with a sun in the back? I have no idea, Aaron. Jetson. <laughs> Jetson. Yes. Jetson. <laughs> All right. Sean, do you have a guess? I don't. Um, uh, I mean, I have a guess, right? I don't have a, a, a uh, an educated an one. answer. Yeah, I'm just gonna <laughs> say, um, yeah, uh, Tets R Us. I don't know. Well, you're both very close, but neither of you got it. It was actually Tet Vision. Tet Vision. <laughs> Yeah, so if you look if you look I'm closely sure how close I was. Yeah, if, if you look closely in one scene, it's this right off right beside her hand it says Tet Vision. And I thought that's the stupidest thing I've ever seen, so I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, that's actually pretty um, terrible. Yeah. Um so when Jack lands at the football stadium, he says This is to the me. last oh this is to you. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I've I've jumped the gun. You're fine. Um the super the last Super Bowl was played there, uh, and what play does he say wins the game? It's a hail mary. You're right. That is a, it's a hail mary. Yeah. yeah. We get Ted Vision. <laughs> we get the hail mary. This is a scam. A scam. I say. It was. It was 2017. <laughs> was the uh, was yeah. the final game too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, back to Kevin and Aaron. In Jack's Earth hideaway, or his man cave that he uses to get away from Victoria, yes. he listens to A Wider Shade of Pale. What are two other band albums that he has in his collection of records? Oh, I got this one. Right. He's right. got uh, Duran Duran Rio, and he's mm-hmm. got Asia. Asia! Yep. Yes, yes. It was <laughs> the heat of the oh. moment. <laughs> exactly. Yep. He also had Blue Oyster Cult, Blue Oyster yes. Cult Lloyd there. Uh, so I- any of those answers would work. So we're tied one to one. So Sean, back to you. When Jack thinks he has located Drone One Seven Two in the New York Library, he finds a book that he takes home with him, oh. titled "Lays of Ancient Rome" by Thomas Babington uh, Macaulay. When he opens the book. Where the bookmark is and reads one of the poems, what page is <laughs> oh, he on? God. Uh, I'm going to go off the drone number and say 172. No, that's not correct. Yeah. So we're going to go back. You guys have a chance to steal. 49? It is 49. Woo! Oh, because of its number. Oh, that's great. Yeah. That's a good All guess. Right, so that was a good guess. Two, two to one. Uh, and this one will go to Aaron and Kevin. Survivors from the Odyssey are found in their capsules. Uh, his wife, I forget her name off the top of my head, on Rachel? her... Uh, Julia. What was her name? Julia. Julia, Julia thank you. Uh, on, on her uh, capsule, you see the Russian flag. We see one other capsule with a flag on it. What is the country? Of that flag. Kevin, do you know? I, I would just be guessing. Do you I, have any I idea? think just out of solidarity, we need to say it's uh, Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not. I do appreciate that. <laughs> but uh, it is not. Sean, do you have a guess? The only other flag I remember was on Victoria's sleeve, and that was the Union Jack for England. But I, I guess there wouldn't be a capsule with that on there. But that's what I'll say. Right. It was Japan. Oh, yeah, uh, the very, that. the very first, the very first capsule he comes to with a person in it. So he gets to one that's empty, but the first one that has a person in it is uh, a Japanese astronaut with a Japanese flag. Cool. Yeah. All right. So this, where are we now? Who does this go to? I've lost track. This here. one's to me. That one's to you. All right. So this one's to you. Um, 
as they lower 172 down for deployment, a pillar can be seen with graffiti on it. What's written in that graffiti? Now, this is this is when they're getting ready to uh, you know, oh, load it the, up to yeah. send it off to the ship. Graffiti. I have, I have no idea. It, it says, uh, Tet Vision sucks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Aaron, Kevin, do you have a guess? Kevin? I um, vaguely remember. This is not my answer, but I'm just going to talk with Kevin here for a moment. Okay. <laughs> now, <Confirm. if> you, <laughs> Kevin, was it like Tet sucks, scavs rule? <laughs> I don't think. I think it was like. Was it like the poem or something? So. Mm. Ah, damn it! I don't. I honestly don't remember. I do you... vaguely remember seeing graffiti. <laughs> I, I believe it was brown. Do I get a half a point for that? <laughs> yeah, well, it's just brown. <laughs> you guys have already you guys have already won. Uh, but I, so I, I will give you the answer here. It simply three uh, four letters. I don't know what it means, but it's I mag I M A G, and that oh. was uh, what was well, on no. the pillar. You sure it wasn't I mag, and it was product placement. Was there a <laughs> I, I thought it was at first. Ruin in the background, <laughs> <laughs> like demolition I'm man. I mean, IMAG yeah, so stands that, for image magnification. I mean, that's a real thing, but it makes no sense in the context of this movie. Yeah, I don't know. That's what was written there, though. So, right. uh, that's the game. Yes! Yay! Yay! Congratulations. Uh, all right. Thank you. Time for... You win nothing, other than... Um, <laughs> bragging, bragging rights. Bragging rights. Uh, I'll mail you some stickers, too. Uh, Sounds good! All right, time for this. Excuse me while I whip this out. Top three, we're going to do movies where they destroy New York because this movie technically takes place in New York City. Uh, and what cooler city in the world to destroy than New York? So we will start this week with Kevin. Do you want me to do all three? Yep. Or Okay. And I was enraged because you asked this question on Twitter and immediately somebody gave my top three. I was like, sure. son of a... So, number three will be Escape from New York. All right. Boom. Crime ruined New York City and turned it into a prison. So there you go. Number two, the Avengers. The Chitauri came through the portal. That's a good one. Aliens. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's a good one. Give me some aliens. And number one, with a bullet... Ghostbusters, the Stay Pup Marshmallow Man, <laughs> yeah. walks through town wrecking. Yes. yes. Top three, New York is destroyed. Enjoy. Boom. Aaron. Well, he stole one of mine, which was, uh, damn, I can't read my writing. All right. I'm just going to give you my list. Number one, Planet of the Apes. Which Number one? two, which, original which one? King Kong. Which which Planet of the Apes? Because there's like f- original. three. Original. Okay, so the bad <laughs> one. The Mark Wahlberg. Uno, not Marky Mark and the <laughs> Funky Bunch. It's just assume I'm saying original. <laughs> okay. The original Planet of the uh, uh, Planet of the Apes. The original King Kong, and Escape from New York. All right, and I and I tried to only list ones that uh, I'd actually seen because no, sure. Well, yeah, I've never, I've never seen Armageddon. I d- I've never seen half the stuff that Kevin has seen. So Armageddon's good too. I like that one. And frankly, I only saw Escape from New York for the podcast, and Kevin made me watch it. A classic. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's that's a that's worth watching. Uh, yeah, typically the top three is like stuff that you actually like. So. Yeah, um, <laughs> generally speaking. Generally. Yeah. Uh, generally speaking. Okay, uh, I'll do mine now. Uh, so, uh, my number three, you're all going to laugh at me for this, but I don't really care. It's Godzilla, the 2001. Uh, oh, God. It's a bad movie, but it's, it has a weird place in my heart. Or not 2000, 98, maybe? I can't remember. The Matthew Broderick one. Again, yeah, the classic. Yeah. It, oh yeah. My kids had like that that Godzilla. It had yeah. little people you could drop it and <laughs> fall out of its mouth and nice. stuff. Yeah, it's a bad movie, but I like it for some reason. Again, it's just a weird thing. Just like Oblivion. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. I like Oblivion. For, I think Oblivion's a good movie, and I think uh, Godzilla is a bad movie, but I like them both for very different reasons. I think it's okay to like bad movies, though. I think that's okay. Uh, as we long encourage as it. Yeah, as long as you're having fun, I think that's what matters. Like, you know. See, but if you're having fun, then it's not bad. Yeah. That's my theory. Well, I just, yeah. I, it's a good point, but it's, it's just a bad movie. Uh, so that's my number three. My number two is going to be Armageddon. And my number one is going to be Independence Day. There you go. Andrew. I have uh, my number three as Deep Impact. Mm-hmm. And another, number another, two. Is it I, Morgan Freeman the president in that, or is it Danny Glover? I he is. No, it's Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. No. Yeah. Uh, I have number two at Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And then number one, I have The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh. I didn't think about that one. I've seen I that mean, one. I mean, it's more than just New York. But New York is destroyed in the yeah. process. <laughs> yeah. Like, doesn't Earth get destroyed and then they rebuild <laughs> yeah, yeah, it or yeah. something? <laughs> exactly. It's kind of a loophole, but I used it. So you can keep that go. in your pocket hey. for the top three Los Angeles gets destroyed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bring right. that out again. Yeah. Nashville gets destroyed. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, boom. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was trying to think. There's there's no way that we can get uh, Jurassic Park to fit in that one or um, Star Trek. So. Yet. Yet, Yet right. is well, that's true. right. Yet. <laughs> but, uh, and I was thinking about Trek, but I, I always try to find a, oh, I didn't find a Star Trek connection for this movie. Oh, well, I will maybe do that later. Uh, Space the, the Borg. The Borg is well. There's <laughs> only in first th- contact. They take over the Earth. Does that does that count as destroying yeah. New York? The, the problem it's, is, it's is first that contact. There, there's only like four actors in this movie, and so that's that's kind of the problem. I mean, there's a bunch of like background survivor scav people, but oh, Suri Cruz actually was uh, the mm-hmm. little girl. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Good for her. Oh, and she and I almost share a birthday just a couple days later. Anyway. You're like family. Yeah. <laughs> we're, <laughs> when you're here, you're family. That's right. <laughs> weird, weird family. Uh, Twitter uh, offered a couple of good uh, suggestions. It's the Feels Good podcast at, at Feels Good FGP. Escape from New York Ghostbusters Avengers. So that's your. That first. was the one. Yeah. I was enraged. This is your exact list. That's great. Uh, let's see. Cameron from Green Shirt Podcast, a newbie's trek through TNG, says, Escape from New York, Cloverfield, and King Kong 1933. Yep. Uh, that's it. Uh, usually Twitter offers more, but I haven't been on Twitter in two weeks, so I'm not surprised that no one commented else. Um, <laughs> that's the they truth. were protesting. No, I you just... Got, you got to prime the pump. No, I just really needed a break from Twitter. I just needed to get away from it, and uh, it's been kind of a... Frankly, it's been kind of lovely, but uh, I don't blame you. Honestly, the podcast has kind of suffered a little bit, so I guess I got to get back into the muck and uh, and there's some people that I miss, and that's good too. All right, time for their names are Andrew and Sam. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Wait, what's supposed to happen? Okay, there, Weird Al. That's uh, see that that makes sense if you know that. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Weird Al. I'm kind of excited about that. I, I didn't know about too. it until today. Yeah, I am too. That that trailer looks ridiculous, which is what it should be. This is where we give this movie a score from 0 to 10. And I have a strong feeling that no matter what I give it, this is not going to have a high rating. <laughs> uh, Andrew goes first this time. IMDb has this movie at a 7 out of 10. Mm-hmm. And... Mm. And I, my friends, can just not go that high. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to be around. Uh, it's not a terrible film. It's it's pretty. Uh, it, you know, it it's fine for me to watch once. I don't think I'll ever watch it again. Um, I'm kind of irritated at the fact that every movie poster that is made for this movie depicts these huge scenes of the empire state building and the, the, uh, Washington or Brooklyn bridge. Brooklyn bridge yeah. And yeah. Uh, and yeah, in the movie, all you see is like a little tip of just the tip. Just of, the house of, of lies. Things, you know? It's a house yeah. of lies. It is. And so, uh, because of that fact alone, no, no, uh, 
I can't give this more than a seven. So I'm going to be around, a, I'm going to say a 5.4 out of 10. Okay. Uh, Kevin. We watch a lot of, let's say, substandard films on our podcast. But I find the the standard score is usually around, like, if I give it a six, then I'm kind of like, maybe not my favorite, but I'll probably, you know, mosey around these parts once again in the future. This movie is a solid five, in my opinion. Not, again, not offensively horrible. Just kind of blah. You know what I mean? It, it, it's It's pretty to look at, but... I don't need to watch it again. So, right. solid five. Okay. Aaron? This film is a solid one out of five. <laughs> and I'm going hard on the one because it so, is offensively slow. Those are two hours that were robbed. When I'm on my deathbed, I'm going to look back and say... <laughs> I could have used those last two hours to say goodbye to my children or something, but I will never get them back. So you're going to say a two? I'm Is that two out of one? Well, yeah, one but out of five? Out of five. yeah, one out of five. So that's a two out of ten. This is an out of ten. I was not given these instructions. <laughs> you I deny your explanation. What? What is well, <laughs> it's not my fault your co-host didn't didn't give you all of the I things. Absolutely did. She's yeah. She's going rogue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say you said it too. I will never watch this movie again, and hopefully the the mind wipe has taken hold, and there's no leaks where I get bits and pieces of Tom Cruise in Iceland kind of. Coming through in my dreams. In your nightmares. <laughs> ah! It's not that bad. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, I'm sending you a hug because I'm sorry that you love this film so much. Uh, and I hope I, I do not offend. And, oh, you don't offend um, me. I, I didn't make the movie. I don't, you know, I'm saying it's not like. <laughs> you seem to have a very strong emotional connection to this film. And I'm sorry to crush your dreams. Oh, but... again, I, I didn't make it. I'm not related to uh, anyone that made it. Uh, I, I get no residuals from the film. Um, but I think it's a good movie. I don't think it's bad. Uh, I've seen it, like I said, four or five times. I saw it in the theater. That's um, amazing. Yeah. You are Jack and Vicka, is what you're saying. I guess. I don't know. Or he's the Borg. It's the Borg King. Maybe that's true. <laughs> I, 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 I think I'm a little too uh, too chubby to be the Borg King, whatever. But that's fine. Uh, IMDb gives this a... Uh, IMDb says seven, like Andrew says. I think that's the perfect score for this. I'm going to give it a, a seven. Uh, I think this is uh, a good sci-fi film and should be seen by sci-fi fans. Uh, does it hurt my soul that this movie is only a little bit higher than Watership Down or <laughs> um, other such movies as Wild Wild West? Guys, this oh, this Lord. is not in the Come same on. category That's also as a one. No, that that is a, a, a travesty against mankind. I yeah. mean, this is not that level. Yeah, this, this is, is not that level. This, uh, well, according to your scores, this is the same <laughs> level as Halloween Kills. Which is a bad movie. I didn't. Yeah, uh, Kevin loves that. It's, it's a but bad movie. But wait a minute, movie. you're a seven. That's not, and I love this movie kind of score. I got to be honest. No, again, this movie has some problems. I don't, <laughs> but it that it's not a perfect movie. But a seven is a good score. A seven, seven. Says, That's a C. Okay. It's a C. If you go to a restaurant and and the, the health department is graded at a C. <laughs> Do you then get like undercooked steak and a runny egg, if it's, or if maybe it's, do you pass on by? I mean, you know, a C. God, God, no, I'm not eating there if it's a C, unless <laughs> it's you know, again, like a family restaurant, and I know that they've you know at least washed their hands at some point during the day. But um, I mean, it's not a two or a five. I mean, it you know, I'll watch this again. You know, next time it's on HBO, and if it's like, I'll, I'll put it on. I. I I have no problems watching this again, and I will recommend it to anyone that hasn't seen it. If you're listening to this saying, should I watch it? Yes. If you like sci-fi, if you like post-apocalyptic, if you want to see Tom Cruise do fun action things, then watch it. If, if you're suffering you, from insomnia. Yeah, you know, if you want to hear some good film score, then watch it. If you think like these three crazy people, and then, <laughs> then don't. 
I'm not I'm not here to say that they're right or wrong. I'm just here to say that their opinion is different than mine, and that is okay. So we're, and we're just saying, you know, don't waste your time. Yeah. <laughs> you you guys put this on the same par as that really bad George Clooney movie we watched, uh, Midnight Sky. I mean, this is better than Midnight Sky. This I've is heard better. I've heard of Midnight Sky. Uh, was it so ne- you're, put, you're saying it's the same level of as a movie we've never heard of. Well, y- how many movie references did you make today that we haven't heard of? Yeah, bum, 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 bum. Uh, Christmas Fair Chronicles enough. 2. Touché. This this movie got a, a, a little bit higher than Christmas Chronicles 2. I mean, come on, you people. I'm just teasing. <laughs> you people. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. Please tell our listeners where they can find your stuff because I again, I was listening to I listened to your uh, Wrath of Khan episode and I had a Khan! really I had a good time yelling at my phone. <laughs> we had a, we had a lot of questions about whether or not you can repair the warp drive of the Enterprise by shoving Spock's face directly into the radiation. <laughs> here's here's the funny thing. This is so funny. I, honestly, I wanted. Uh, I'm glad we're, we're here. When I was a kid watching this movie, because I grew up on this movie, I've, I've probably seen this movie, no lie, 70 times, right? And it was one of those things is, as a kid, I thought, legit thought he was doing a mind meld with the ship. You know, because he puts his hands on on bones. He does. You know, and then he goes into it. He puts the gloves on. And he opens up the, the thing, and he just sticks his hands down in there. And I thought, oh, he's he's doing something to the ship. He's having some kind of whatever, right? But I honestly don't care that we don't know what it is. I don't care. I really don't. There are <laughs> Either some... did the writers. Well, well actually, I mean... your your statement at least makes some sense versus I'm I'm plugging the hole with me cranium. <laughs> well, but the <laughs> like the thing. So, like you mentioned that you had seen uh, Into Darkness, which is the 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 other con movie yeah. from the J.J. Abrams universe. In that one, Captain Kirk has to climb the warp core, which is like the aggro crag from the '90s, right? Like it like <laughs> it shouldn't be hard to do that, right? So he's climbing this thing, and he gets up there, and he just kicks it. He literally, like, Fonzies, a hey, and fixes the ship, right? And to me, that's dumber than what Spock did, because I don't know what Spock did, but I watched Kirk literally kick the warp core, right? So... Well, you expect that from Kirk, because Kirk is an idiot. <laughs> but Spock... Is Spock. He's, and, he's and also, perfectly fabulous in everything he does. And one of your other big co- questions and complaints was like, why did they leave the Reliant crew on the planet? How would they know how to fly a spaceship? Again, they're all engineered. They're all genetically engineered superhuman whatevers, right? Yes. So it, it would be like, uh, your point was, if I handed a laptop to someone today from 1960 and said, figure out how to do anything, they would not know how to do it. But like, if that person was genetically engineered, I know we don't we, we have no real comparison, but that was how the script got away from it. But the the main thing you have to remember is that Nicholas Meyer, who wrote it, had never seen Star Trek before. Oh yeah, he had he had never seen Trek before, and so he made a naval movie. So if you think about the the naval the the, the two battles in the movie, right? The Reliant and the Enterprise, they literally broadside each other like a naval. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then the end with the 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 and the nebula, it's a submarine battle, right? He, they come up from behind and it's torpedoes and stuff. So it's a, it's a Different naval. levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why they changed the uniforms to make it look more militaristic. Uh, that's why the, the, the funeral at the end is, again, a, a naval theme with sh- launching the torpedo down to the th- whatever. It's all very naval because he can relate, Nicholas Meyer could relate to that having directed another uh, kind of naval film. So um, I don't know if that helps any, but... It helps me a great deal. I mean, we we liked the movie. We oh, loved sure. oh, yeah. it. Oh yeah, yeah. We loved oh yeah. It. We just like to poke fun, and that's where okay. Fun can be poked. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Again, totally worth it. it it's totally. Um, <laughs> and your point about like, and I never thought about it. again. I've seen that movie a thousand times, and you're like, why why aren't there like little children, cybernetic children, running all around? And I'm like, or the the like, why haven't they had kids? And I thought, oh shit, they're right. There should be children. Um, well, there's no water on the planet. They're just eating giant earwigs. Well, so maybe you that know, cuts there's, down there's, on there's, testosterone there's or no something. There's no water on know. Dune, but those people survive. And there's no water in you know other parts of our own world, and yet people live there. So I just took that maybe as... Maybe they're eating their children. Ooh, I hope not. <laughs> Squeezing them. 
So let's, anyway, let's, anyway. Why does his crew look like uh, like those exotic male dancers, the Thunder they, from Down Under? Under. Yeah, they literally were Chippendale dancers, though. Like that's part yeah. of like that's part of true. They were literally Chippendale. They seem to be just oiled the whole time. Well, well, well. I mean, wouldn't you be? <laughs> you know, I would be. If I looked like that, I'd be oiled all the time. Shit. Well, I um, don't look like that, and I'm well adult. You um, need a bandana, though. That's what's important. That's true. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I, you're, again, you're not wrong. You said that they look like like space pirates kind of stuff. <laughs> but I mean, They did. You're right. You're 100% right. And the aesthetic totally worked for me. I was totally fine with it. Again, as a kid, it was, it looked, it, it was a product of its time. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. Uh, Far superior to the original. Oh, uh, my God. Oh, the yeah, motion no, the, picture. Yeah, the yeah. motion picture is bad. The director's cut makes it kind of watchable, but it's still hard to watch. I mean, you want to talk about a slog, you know, a slog fest like that. Absolutely. You know, that's that's rough. Anyway. Oh, also, Aaron, you're 100% wrong. The one with the whales is adorable and wonderful, and it's not the horrible thing that you said. But, <laughs> <laughs> sail away, sail away, sail away. That's right. <laughs> so where can you find us? Yes, we please. Yeah, podcast. we need to get off of this because I'll talk on this for another hour and a half. So please tell uh, our I was listeners. Say, the, the way to get Sean to keep talking is to talk about Star Trek for yeah. a while. Oh, uh, we're we're Star Trek <laughs> over Star Wars. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. You well, are. He is. he wasn't. I, that was a conversation, and it, yes. and I I'm of the mind that it you can love both. I agree with that as well. Yeah. I agree. With I that I, as I well. never understood that you had. You had I mean, I literally have on my desk, you can't see it, I have a, an illuminated Death Star and an R2-D2 candy dish sitting next nice. to a Captain Kirk action figure who's literally leaning up against my lightsaber lamp. You know, I mean, it's just whatever. I mean, Absolutely. don't get me wrong. I love the first three. Even the Ewoks? Even the Ewoks. They filmed <laughs> that up where I went to college. So, anyway, uh, yes, at your show, <laughs> tell people how to find it. We are the podcast that wouldn't die. We're on Twitter at T Podcast TW Die. We're on Facebook at the podcast that wouldn't die. We're on Instagram. Um, you can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere the finer podcasts are available. Awesome. Boom. And all of that, uh, and that your links to your socials will be in the show notes where people can Fantastic. find you and go listen to your Star Trek episode and they too can yell at their phones. Um, <laughs> That's half the fun. It is fun. I mean, and, and, and when I when people tell me that, I, I look at that as, hey, it's engagement. Absolutely. You know, it means that they're listening and whether they agree or disagree with my point, it means that someone's listening and and having a good time with it, and that's what most important, I think. No, we love it. Argue with us. We don't care. Yeah, right. I mean, we're like we're a book club. That's what I think of. We're a book club for movies, so we're gonna spoil the hell out of it. Yeah, and just you know, discuss it amongst yourselves. Right. Let us know. Tell Absol- me I'm wrong. Absolutely. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I love it. Okay, that's it. That's our show. Um, gosh, what are we doing next week? I'll tell you next week. We are doing. Um, we're doing Superman, the original 1979. Oh wow! Superman with um, our good and friend. Mr. Uh, yeah, yeah, good friend. Uh, we're gonna watch the Earth go backwards, and you know, time go backwards. That's that's a cool just good thing. science. Yeah. And what's his name? Who plays? Uh, uh, Marlon Brando's in that. Gene Marlon? Hackman's in the. Oh, wasn't it the the guy from the Limey? What's his name? Terrence Stamp, isn't it? Isn't it? Very He's, briefly. Uh, Terrence okay. Stamp's in the second one. He is uh, Neil before Zod. Right. He appears in the beginning, though, if I remember correctly. Like oh, they send him to the Phantom Zone. I thought at the that was only the in the. I thought I that love was just, Terrence Stamp. I thought that was just the second one. I don't remember. Again, I haven't watched either one of these movies in thirty years. Uh, I, I I don't think I have either. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to Superman. Next week. Uh, you will in, believe a man could fly. I just love that he gains the superpower of jumping off a building in his clothes and then just magically transforming into his cape and cowl or whatever. Like, you know, or not cowl, but his cape or whatever. Like, I didn't know that was a power that Superman has, but apparently that is one of them, which is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so that's it. Uh, go to our website, cheapsuitreviews.libsyn.com. There you can find links to all of our other stuff, including merchandise where you can buy stuff so we can help uh, keep the lights on. That'd be cool. Buy a T-shirt like Andrew's wearing one. Actually, is Andrew wearing the shirt today? No. 
Not today. Not actually. today. He usually he's usually wearing our swag. That's cool. Uh, also, again, please leave us a review on iTunes or Spot not Spotify. Yeah, Spotify. Leave leave us reviews. Those are kind of ways to help uh, expand the show. Let other people find us. If they say, hmm, I don't know if I'm going to check out this show with the chair on their logo. I'll look at the reviews. Hey, this person says that they like them. Maybe I'll give them a listen. That's how you can help us out. So please leave us a review. It takes 10 seconds, maybe 15. Uh, that's going to do it. So on behalf of our awesome guests, Aaron and Kevin, on behalf of also Andrew and our poor, sick friend, Sam, this is Sean saying thank you all so much for listening. We'll see you next week for Superman. This is Cheap Seat Reviews.